Do you love plants that show color year-round and are also easy to care for and stay small in size? In this video, I'm going to share with you one of my favorite houseplants, Crepanthus bivitatis, or Earth Stars. Hi, hello, welcome. If you're new here, my name's David, and here on Cactastic, we mostly talk about plants, but I've been known to stray off topic a bit here and there. In today's episode, we'll be discussing this wonderful plant, Crepanthus bibitatis, also known as Earth Stars. Uh, about a year ago, I published another video where I potted this same plant into this pot here, so if you'd like to see that, check out the video that I'll link below. Today, I'll be upgrading the pot to this nice decorative pot here. I thought we'd also discuss what makes this such a great plant. I'll share my care tips and what I do to keep this plant happy and looking great. The first thing you'll notice about the Bivitatis is this wonderful leaf color with striping. The word Bivitatis comes from Latin meaning two bands or stripes, which you can see here in the leaves. I really enjoy plants that have beautiful leaves. It gives you something nice to look at throughout the year when the plant is not in flower. And this particular bromeliad, I would say, does not have very stunning flowers. They're small and white and just not very showy like some other bromeliads such as Guzmania or Acmea. The reddish pink color of the leaves are brought out by light. When this plant gets less light, the leaves will be more green in color. I have been growing this plant on a windowsill. And if you saw the last year's repotting video, you will notice that the leaves were much more green then. This is because that video was recorded in the winter when the sun was not as strong, so the leaves were showing less of the red color. Right now it's October and the leaves are still quite red. If I continue to grow this plant on a windowsill, it would fade to a greener color over the winter months. But after today's repotting, I will start to keep this plant in my plant cabinet under lights, and hopefully I can keep this wonderful leaf color year-round. I found this beautiful handmade pottery that I'll be potting up the Crepanthus in. The pot does have a drainage hole and cover. I love this wonderful textured exterior. This particular color is called Flowing Gold, but it also comes in a few other colors and styles. If you'd like to find out more information about this pottery, check out the link that I'll leave in the description. I gotta warn you though, you may want to buy them all. I know I certainly wouldn't mind a few more in my collection, so proceed with caution. Lately, I've been making more of an effort to upgrade my pottery. It's a bit difficult when you have as many plants as I do, but having a plant in nice pottery really enhances its look. And I think the Crepanthus is going to look stunning in this pottery. The soil I have prepared today is based on the conditions that I will be keeping this Crepanthus. It's mostly a standard commercial potting soil in which I've added a bit of orchid bark for soil aeration and drainage. Crepanthus are terrestrial bromeliads, meaning that they grow on the forest floor instead of epiphytically on trees, like most other bromeliads do. But even though the Crepanthus grows near the ground level, plants like these generally do not grow in the soil. Many forests have a layer of humus, leaf litter, mosses, and other organic matter that is above the soil layer. It's in this layer that plants like these grow, and not in the actual mineral soil layer that's underneath. So, even though this plant grows terrestrially, it does not like a heavy soil. It likes a bit more air and drainage than most terrestrial plants would. But, the soil must be adjusted based on the conditions that the plant will be growing in. I will be keeping this plant as a house plant, and my house is not a humid tropical jungle like the Crepanthus' native Brazil, so I can use a much more water retentive soil, but as I mentioned I still added some bark so that it's more airy than a standard potting soil. 
But if I were keeping this plant in a terrarium, for instance, which would be a high humidity environment, I wouldn't use any potting soil at all. I would grow this plant in 100% orchid bark or even on live moss. So you'll need to make adjustments based on the environment that you keep the plant. You'll also likely want to use more bark than I did if you live in a humid environment, if you tend to overwater, or if you're somehow wicking moisture into the soil. All right, so first I'm gonna take it out of the pot and see what it looks like. So as you can see, it was in a fairly small pot, but there's no significant roots on this plant. And you'll also want to be very gentle in handling this plant because these offsets can break off fairly easily. Unless you want to break off the offsets and, you know, create babies, but I'm trying to keep mine into a clump here. All right, so I'm going to start by putting some soil in. And a little trick is if you put the old pot into the, into the pot that you want to plant it in, you can kind of see how much room that the root system took up. This one wasn't very root bound, so it's not going to fit, you know, nicely into this hole, but this kind of gives me an idea of like how deep I want to make this. So you, I actually left quite a bit of space on top here because one, I want to leave room for watering. Two, I'm going to put some decorative moss on the top. And three, this plant, you know, as you saw, it doesn't have a very significant root system. So it just doesn't need a lot of soil to be growing in. So I'm purposely keeping the soil level fairly low. And you can see it left this little indentation right here where I can now put the plant in. But since most of the soil didn't stay with the roots, I will be putting just a little bit more soil at the bottom. And I'm just going to damp it down and try to press it into the soil. You can always add a little bit more if you feel like it needs a little bit more. Once again, I don't want to put too much soil in here. I want to make sure to damp it down all the way because also the soil will settle over time. So I just want to make sure it won't settle too much. And then let me grab the moss. So I got some dried moss and I'll just be gently placing it around the edges. And I'm making sure to pick up all of the leaves and that the moss goes under the leaves. How's this looking? I think this is looking pretty good. And here it is, repotted. I'm definitely loving the way this Crepanthus is looking in its new pot. The moss is a nice complementary color to the red leaves, and the pottery is stunning even without a plant in it. I think this is going to look great in my plant cabinet where I'll have it on display with some of my other favorite plants. And there we have it everyone! I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I also want to know what your favorite bromeliads are. Are they earth stars, air plants, neurogelia, or maybe you're new to bromeliads? 
Be sure to share with me in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!